Okay, so this lesson is on significant digits. When I was growing up, we always called them significant figures. Um, so you can either call them significant digits or significant figures. Okay, so this is one of those uh, topics in the farm tech uh, math course that is hard for a lot of students to understand. And on top of that, there's not going to be very many questions on any tests or on the PTCB regarding this subject, but uh, it's still something I think you should know. Now, one thing about this subject, uh, I've seen textbooks written for pharmacy techs where the authors really don't understand the subject. You know, I, I won't say I use that textbook, but if I was using that textbook, I would just tell them not to read that section and to read the section out of my little handout book that I give. Anyway, so what are significant digits? Okay, so before we can talk about significant digits, we have to talk about numbers. Okay, there's two different types of numbers in this world, okay? There are exact numbers and inexact numbers. Okay, so let's say you have one divided by four. You can say that is 0 0.2500. You can put a million zeros on there if you want and it's still going to be accurate, okay? That's a pure mathematical number, okay? The other type of number in this world is a measurement. You know, I don't care what you're measuring, if you're measuring um, the length of you know, how many miles from here to San Francisco, from Sacramento to San Francisco, or um, you have a ruler and you're measuring a piece of paper, whatever you're measuring, no matter how accurate the measurement is, the measurement is always inexact. Now, that's not counting, counting. Okay, if you count something, if you count a dozen eggs, say, I think you have exactly a dozen eggs, but that's not considered a measurement, that's considered a count. Okay, so, now we know that there's two types of, me uh, two types of numbers in this world, exact and inexact and that all measurements are inexact, now we can start talking about significant digits. So all significant digits are, it's a code for uh, whoever measured, made the measurement, he's gonna write down the answer with a certain number of digits to tell the next person that looks at that measurement how accurate it was. Okay, so let's say we have, this is a ruler here, and it's marked off in, uh, we'll say these are each centimeters. Okay, of course, it's bigger than a centimeter. And let's say we're measuring a piece of paper here that is this big. So, <clears throat> This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we would measure the, the uh, piece of paper, and we know that it is somewhere between five and six centimeters. We know for sure it's at least five, and we know for darn sure it's not six. So we know for, for sure one of the digits is a five. There's no question about that. Okay. Now, we can kind of look over here and we say, well, it's about halfway, so we'll say it's 5.5 centimeters. Okay, so all measurements can have an exact number, which is the 5, and then they can have one digit that is an estimate. Okay? So in this case, we have two significant figures. Both of those um, figures are considered significant because we have one that's exact and one that's a um, estimate. Now, let's say that we had a more accurate ruler that was marked off in tenths of a centimeter. Can't get ten in there, but we'll pretend there's ten. Okay, so of course, a tenth of a centimeter is what? A millimeter. 
But now we can look on there and we can say, well, actually, so it's, five, it's between 5.4 and 5.5. So now we're going to say it's about 5.45. It's about halfway between the four, the four millimeter and the five millimeter. So you can see that if I reported this measurement, then whoever looked at that measurement would think, okay, well, he must have had a ruler that was marked off in millimeters. If he looked at this measurement, whoever read the measurement would say, well, he must have had a ruler that was only uh, measured in uh, marked off of centimeters. So let's talk about the different type of questions that come up on tests with, regarding significant digits or figures, whatever you want to call them. The, the number one question that always comes up is how many significant figures are in a certain number or certain measurement. There's all sorts of different rules. Um, so you have you know, 6.001, 600, 0.002. All non-zero numbers are significant. So the 6 and the 1, the 6 and the 2, they're significant no matter what. All zeros between two significant figures are also significant. Any trailing zeros with no decimal point are not significant. Any leading zeros are not significant. So all these rules that um, you have can boil down to one simple question. Is there a decimal point? Okay, so there's a couple of examples. These have decimal points. If there is a decimal point, they're all significant except the leading zeros. So the leading zeros are zeros in front of a non-zero digit, right? So these are leading zeros. Everything is significant except the leading zero. So this one, there's one, two, three, four, five. This one, there's two. If there's no decimal point, they're all significant except the trailing zeros. And no trailing zeros over here, so they're all significant. One, two, three, four, five. This one, no decimal point, so they're all significant except the trailing zeros. One, two. These are trailing zeros, so they're not significant, sorry. So, but the six is, okay, so we have one, okay. So if you're doing a test and they ask you how many significant figures in these numbers, remember, if there is a decimal point, they're all significant except the leading zeros. If there's no decimal point, they're all significant except the trailing zeros. Okay, so that's another part of this. Now, the other part to this subject is what do you do when you add and subtract measurements with significant figures, and what do you do when you multiply and divide significant figures? Okay, so why does this even matter? Okay, I'll tell you why it matters here. Let's say you have three people that weigh a drug, and you want to combine all those weights. So the first guy shows up and he has 1.5 uh, 
two grams. Okay, another guy shows up and he has uh, one gram, and another guy shows up and he has 1.3 grams. Okay, so you add all those up, right, to see how much you have all together. So you got a two and an eight, two. So you would say, well, I got 3.82 grams. But since this guy was only accurate to the nearest gram, you can't say for sure that this is accurate to the hundredth of a gram. So the rule is when you add and subtract measurements with significant figures, the answer can be no more accurate than the least accurate measurement. So in this case, it's to the nearest gram. So you have to round this answer to the nearest gram, which is four grams, okay? So you'd have to say, well, I've got about four grams. You can't say, I have 3.82 grams because you have no idea what that measurement really is to the hundredth, okay? So when you add and subtract, it's accurate to the least accurate measurement. Okay. Now, this is where a certain textbook I've seen gets things mixed up when you multiply and divide uh, measurements. So let's say you have a plot of land like this, and you, two different people measure the length and width. First guy measures um, 63.92 meters, okay? And this person up here measured, so that's about twice or so. So let's say he measured um, 120 meters, okay? So this person was accurate to the hundredth of a meter. This guy just was only accurate to the 10 meters, okay? There's only two significant figures here. Over here, there's four significant figures. So you want to know how many square meters you have. So you multiply 120 times 63.92, and you end up, your answer would, that you get is 7670.4 square meters. Now, do you know for certain that you can, you're accurate to the tenth of a meter? Well, no, because this is only accurate to the nearest ten meters, okay? So the rule is when you multiply and divide significant figures, your answer can have no more significant figures than the measurement with the least number of significant figures. So in this case, there's two significant figures here. This one has four. So your answer can have no more than two significant figures. So you have to round this to two significant figures, and that would be 7,700 meter square. I know as far as the pharmacy math um, course goes for technicians, this question is probably the most difficult. Um, but all you have to remember is when you multiply and divide measurements with significant figures, your answer can have no more significant figures than the measurement with the least number. Okay, this one has two, this one has four, your answer has two. So you round it to the answer with two significant figures. Thank you for watching.